a bunch of guests from Coffee County High School. Okay, we are picking up with where we left off, which I don't remember the exact page number, but it's Voldemort's request. Somewhere around 442, 443, something like that. Okay, so where we left off was... Um, Voldemort saying the thing about the old, the old argument. Okay, nothing you know, nothing in the world has supported your famous pronouncement that love is more powerful than my kind of magic. Okay, so he asked Dumbledore, and we are going to try and finish it today, believe it or not. Uh, he asks Dumbledore. Will you let me return? Will you let me share my knowledge with your students? I place myself, my talent, at your disposal. Dumbledore's like, okay, cool, cool. So what about those whom you command? What will happen to those who call themselves uh, the Death Eaters? Oh, my friends. They'll, they'll carry on without me. Good, good. I'm glad to hear you consider them friends, says Dumbledore. I was under the impression that they are more in the order of servants. You are mistaken. And notice how Dumbledore kind of, you know, pulls that ace out of the sleeve. So if I were to go to the Hogshead tonight, I wouldn't find a group of them waiting there. Not Rosier, Mulsper, Dolohoff. All names we've seen multiple times before. Awaiting your return. Devoted friends indeed to travel this far with you on a snowy night merely to wish you luck. <clears throat> you are as omniscient as ever. What's he mean? Other than the obvious, you're omniscient. How did you know? How did you know, Dumbledore? Uh, merely friend with the local barman. Notice, barmen, plural. Not just Hogshead, but what do we come, who do we come to learn later? His brother. His brother, okay. Aberforth is the owner, proprietor, runner, if you want, of the Hogshead. So, now, Tom, let us speak openly. My ear. What's he mean, let us speak openly? Come on, no more games. Stop with the pleasantries. Stop with the pleasantries. No more games. What are you really here for? Why have you come here tonight? Surrounded by, ah, notice how Dumbledore replaces friends. And what did he first call them? Servants? Or second call them servants? Henchmen. To request a job we both know you do not want. A job I do not want? I, I want it very much. You want to come back to Hogwarts. You don't want to teach. Believe me, Tom, you don't want to teach. Any more than you wanted to when you were 18. What is it you're after, Tom? Why not try an open request for once? Interesting, because that's the exact same form of a question. Harry is going to propose to him at the very end of book seven. No, not quite the very end. The penultimate, penultimate chapter, like three chapters before the very end. And he's even, if I remember right, He's even going to, Harry is even going to call him Tom there. Only the question isn't going to be, why don't you try an open request? Why don't you try for a little remorse? He asks. Voldemort sneers. Well, you don't want to give me a job. Of course I don't want to give you a job. You're Satan. I don't want to. I don't think for a moment you expected me to, but you came here. You must have a purpose. Come on. Lay your cards out. What do you really want? This is your final word? It is. Then we have nothing more to say to each other. What's that mean? Next time you see me? Yeah, I mean. Do you think that could have been the time when he stored the uh, cup at the room of requirement and stuff? Or not the cup, but the uh, diet and Because he hasn't really been uh, back to Hogwarts since then. Yeah, it's possible. Either that or early on. Um, well, he gets the cup after he leaves Hogwarts. 
He does come back once more after he leaves Hogwarts um, when he asks for the job from Armando Dippet. So, I mean, it could have been then. Pardon? That was directly after before he worked at Sporting Goods, wasn't it? I'm trying to make sense. Wait, when, you got right. after before right next to him. That, oh, okay. My mind's tired. It was yeah, it seemed to me. Yes. That was immediately after he yeah. left Borgen and Burks that he went to I ask for the job. Because he, he didn't get Because, yeah, he, Dippet told him to spend some time. and Yeah, Dippet told him. Yeah, that was. So he couldn't have he couldn't have had the locket. Right. Not locket. Diet. Cut. Diet. Sorry. This is... <laughs> Not this thing, he had and to be not there this thing. In that period of time, uh, and just used it as a pretense to get back into the school, possibly. Use the interview with Dumbledore. Possibly, yeah, possibly, because we don't know, you know, that he goes, you know, knocks on the front door of Hogwarts, you know, and he's taken straight to Dumbledore's office. Um, it's also possible. What else? Who else has he entrusted things to? Malfoy. I mean, it's possible somebody else could Emma could have put it there. Yeah. In her vault at Gringotts, right? So, Dumbledore says, you're right, we don't have anything else to say, other. The time is long gone when I could frighten you with a burning wardrobe and force you to make repayment for your crimes. But I wish I could, though. I wish I could. Why couldn't he? Okay. I mean, theoretically, what could Dumbledore do right here, right now? Kill him. Kill him. Huh. Rude. Yeah. <laughs> Murder. For a second, Harry was on the verge of shouting a pointless warning because he thought Voldemort was about to zap him. So, they come back out. And Harry notices Dumbledore's hand is now blackened and dead looking. So he asks, why'd he come back? Did you ever find out? Yeah, I have ideas. No more than that. What ideas? Give me the memory, Harry. Give me the memory and I'll tell you. Okay. He wanted the defense against the dark arts job. Okay. So the unknowable, unknowable room. Let's see, is there anything in here really I need? That we can skip that because we have so much to try to cover. Yeah, we can skip that. Uh, chapter 22, after the burial. Whose burial? Aragog's, okay. Um, go to... Oh, should I... Make an allusion to that. Well, let me tell you what I'm getting at before I actually do. How do they bury Aragog? Um, it's about, I don't know, five, six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. Maybe before the end of the chapter. There, there, says Slughorn, waving his hand so that the huge pile of earth rose up and then fell with a muffled sort of crash onto the dead spider, forming a smooth mound. So, boom, you know, because the dead spider underneath the huge mound just went splat. Right? Okay. What do you think I was referring to when I said, should I make an allusion to that? Kate, let's, don't say it out loud. Yeah. Somebody in book seven, okay? Aragog's a magical creature, right? He's just, he's not a normal spider. Normal spiders don't talk. Well, I hope they don't talk, because if they do, they're probably plotting against us. So they don't talk, okay? So they go inside. Hagrid's had a bit to drink, as Hagrid is wont to do. And Harry, you know, Chucks to Felix Felicis, and he's feeling pretty good. And he gets Slughorn talking. Let's see here. About three pages before the end. 
Here he says something about the memory. And Slughorn says, yes, yes, that was... Uh, Harry says something about my mom and dad dying. Slughorn, yes, that was terrible, terrible indeed. I, I don't suppose you remember it. Harry, well, I was only one. But I found out what happened. Dad died first. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah. Voldemort murdered him. Notice he uses the name. Voldemort murdered him and then stepped over his body. You know, he's being a little overdramatic. Towards my mom. Not literally true. Why? His dad's lying on the living room floor. Damn fool didn't have a wand in his hand when he took out Voldemort. So, you know, dead. He might have to step over his body to get to the stairs to go upstairs to Harry's room. Okay? So, Slughorn gives a shudder. He told her to get out of the way. Harry said, notice, remorselessly. Why, why remorselessly? Is this Harry not express, expressing remorse over his mother's death? That's not what the remorselessly applies to. He, he has no remorse about uh, putting the image in Slughorn's mind. That's exactly it. He's going to use everything he can. Bear in mind, what did Dumbledore say? Have you used all your cunning, Harry? So, he told me she needn't have died. He only wanted me. She could have run. Oh, dear, she could have. She, she, that's all. It is, isn't it, says Harry. But she didn't want me. That was what really did it. A voice barely more than a whisper. But she didn't want me. She tried to believe he liked me. Stop, stop. Oh, I forgot. You liked her, didn't you? Look in the eyes. Look in the eyes. You know. I don't imagine anyone matter wouldn't have liked her. Very brave, funny, et cetera, et cetera. But you won't help her son? She gave me your life, but you won't give me a memory? Don't say that, sir. I am the chosen one. I have to give you a living. You are the chosen one? Of course I am. Well, you asked it a great deal. You don't want to get rid of the wizard who killed Lily Evans? Harry, Harry. And he gives it to him, okay? To cut to the end. So, chapter 23. Harry runs up to Dumbledore's office. Notice he's not going to, you know, let it sit on the nightstand and wait till the morning. Runs up to Dumbledore's office and gives it to him. And Dumbledore puts it in the pensive, stirs it around a bit, mixes it good, and boop, up pops Slughorn. And then there's Tom Riddle. And he says, uh, what do you know about Horcruxes? Project for Defense Against the Dark Arts? Really? How thick can a teacher be? I mean, really, how stupid can a teacher be? Well, you'll be hard-pressed to find a book about that, so he talks about it. And then he tells them what Horcruxes are. Object in which a person has concealed part of their soul. Horcrux is probably a portmanteau word. Where you take part of one word and jam it up next to a part of another word. Hor, like horrible, crux, just Latin, a cross, a horrible cross. Not probably a cross like this kind of cross, okay, but like a horrible what? A joining. Because the cross has that, whether it's you do it like that, or you do it like that. It's a joining. Two things are crossing. What's being crossed? In which a person has concealed part of their soul. Well, you split your soul, you see. You hide part of it in an object outside the body. So, if the body's attacked or destroyed, you can't die. For part of the soul remains earthbound, undamaged. But, of course, existence in such a form, notice he doesn't get to finish. Okay? His face crumples. Harry hears Voldemort's voice from two years before. And then Slughorn goes on. Existence in such a form, dot, dot, dot. Few would want it, Tom. Why? Because when Harry hears the first part of the quote, that's when he goes back 
and thinks of Voldemort's voice, and he kind of comes back, maybe he missed something. I think he did. If you would want it, Tom. Because what's what should come after the existence in such a form? What did Ferenz tell Harry? First book. The half-life. Cursed half-life. Why? Why cursed? Drinking the unicorn blood. But existence in that kind of form, right? Death would be preferable. as a or what? Cursed person? Yeah, but you're still alive. Life as a vampire? Still alive. Life as a werewolf? Still alive. Life as a... You can go all Eastern, you know. Life as a reincarnated as, as a slug? Still alive. But... This is what? Seemingly. The end. It's final. The next great adventure. Or it's the next great adventure for the well -organized. those who have well-organized minds. Okay? <clears throat> Which we're going to see hit Harry smack between the eyes in just a few moments. So, how do you split your soul? Notice, what about the death would be preferable part? New, new. So how do you split your soul? Well, I mean, it's, soul is supposed to remain intact and whole. It is an act of violation. It is against nature. Remember this? Well, what does that represent? That represents Hogwarts, and yet what does it also represent? Each individual student. Because what does the sorting hat do? It splits the soul to determine where you should go. Okay? But how do you do it? Notice, the soul is supposed to remain whole, intact. It is against nature. Yeah, but how? How do you do it? How do you go against nature? Show me, tell me, teach me. An act of evil. The supreme act of evil by committing murder. Why is murder the supreme act of evil? Because you kind of like take yourself to the end of judges to where you take its life. What are the three unforgivable sins? Uh, excuse me. Unforgivable um, curses. Oh. Sorry. Crucialis. Uh, Crucio. Crucio. Imperial Cruciatus and uh, AK, Avada Kedavra. Murder is what? It's all of them. It's all of them, all wrapped into one nice, tidy little package. Yeah, you could say, well, it's Avada Kedavra because you're killing somebody. Uh, you kill somebody, you take away their will. And it's usually painful. It's also a cross of sorts, okay? The wizard intent upon creating a horcrux would use the damage to its advantage. He would encase the torn portion. So notice, you have to be intent upon creating a horcrux. So, sorry, Travis. And when I do that, I have to be what? Right. Thinking, mm, part of me in the mouth. <laughs> So who's going to, you know, harm my mouse? Isn't there like an incantation you have to do like prior to I don't know. Hermione, when they were like storing the books before they were about to leave in the seventh room, she was like reading out. Of it. She talks about it, but we're never told what it is. Yeah. Okay? The only thing we are told, and we're told very specifically, is the antidote. The unhorcruxing spell of sorts. And I'm using that word spell in its very old meaning as both a word spoken and a word of power or authority. Okay? 
Okay. And it's the very spell Harry offers Voldemort at the end of book seven that is kept out of the film. Which is utterly, I, I don't understand. So, how? Well, there's a spell. Don't ask me. I don't know. How would he know? He'd have to have researched it. And what's Slughorn saying? <clears throat> this is like really, really bad. I don't go reading this stuff. I don't know. You find yourself. Okay? So Riddle goes on. Because he, you know, he realizes Slughorn's offended. What I don't understand is, I mean, okay, so you do one Horcrux. Wouldn't it be better, you know, make you stronger to have your soul in more pieces? I mean, seven, seven, is the most powerfully magical number. Wouldn't it be better to have seven Horcruxes? Well, what does that presume? Seven murders. Well, six, if one of them is left in you. But if you want seven out there and one left in you, then that's seven Horcruxes. Because I don't think the one left in you is considered a Horcrux. Because that's the part in you. A Horcrux is in something else. Dumbledore counts six. Yeah, Dumbledore counts wrong. Yeah, I know. But that's Another example of Dumbledore well, being wrong, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a theory that when Tom Riddle, first time he died, he lost that last bit of soul. So he's a soulless being. That's why there are seven Horcruxes. There are only still seven Horcruxes. Uh, okay. Well, you won't be here, but we'll talk about that when we get to book seven, because I'll show you how it's wrong. Okay. And the, the reason it's wrong has to do with the Forbidden Forest. What happens in the Forbidden Forest? jump to the end. What happens in the Forbidden Forest? Let's go instead to King's Cross. The chapter King's Cross, book seven. This works. You can still do it. <clears throat> Here he says, towards the end of that chapter, talking to Dumbledore, you know, so I'm I'm not really dead. This is all just happening in my head. And Dumbledore essentially says, you know, so why does that make you think you're not really dead? Because Dumbledore says you're you're not, you know, you're mostly dead. You know, you need Miracle Max to bring you back. What's he mean? Well, he tells Harry, you can go back, or you can go on. If he goes back, then he's obviously not dead. If he goes on, then what? Dead. Then he's dead. Dead, dead. My previous class, book for reading, or it's a series of books by Garth Nix, called the Ab Horsen Trilogy. And in the Ab Horsen Trilogy, you, you get death <laughs> described, okay? But death there is a process. You don't die and then you're dead. You have to go through nine gates in order to be fully dead. And you have in that series necromancers, people who intentionally go into death to pull people that are mostly dead or not quite dead back out of death to <coughs> Use them for their purposes. In these novels, you would kind of call them maybe the inferi. But in these novels, those are actually dead, dead people. Okay? So, Nix proposes, if you use that language, death is a process. Well, there are some religious traditions that essentially make that same argument. The book of Job describes the gates of death. And I don't think he means, here's the gate. I think he means gate one, gate two, gate three, okay? So that you have to go all the way in order to be fully, fully, fully dead, okay? Well, Harry does come back, right? But I will argue when we get to that point, Harry dies. Harry really dies. He, he go put a stethoscope, no heartbeat, brainwave, no brain, he's dead, dead, dead. Kick him, he doesn't move dead, okay? <clears throat> so what is it partly that dies in him? What's the bit of Voldemort that got transferred into Harry? It's a Horcrux. What else? Yeah, okay. 
What keeps Voldemort alive when he kills Harry? Is it Nagini? What's in Voldemort? He's got Harry's blood flowing through him. That's why when Harry tells, Vold tells Dumbledore what Voldemort said, Dumbledore gets that look of victory on his face. Dumbledore no now knows, now I got him. Now I know I can, how I can kill him. What's the problem? Harry told Slughorn, not Slughorn, Scrimger, earlier in this book, he doesn't want. He doesn't want to be used. He doesn't realize. He's the fatted calf, man. He is being set up for slaughter. Ever since when? Here, Petunia, take the baby. Take care of him. Ever since then. Okay? Back to here. So. Yeah, Dumbledore does talk about it. He doesn't directly tell Harry. No, he doesn't. So, they come out of the memory, or they stop watching the memory. And they start talking about Horcruxes. And Dumbledore, Dumbledore tells Harry, as far as I know, as far as I am sure, as Voldemort knew, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two. So prior to Voldemort, there had never been what in the wizarding community? Mass murder. No serial murders prior to Voldemort. No single wizard had ever killed more than one person. But you can kill someone without making a whole cross. Yes. Like Grindelwald didn't kill more than... But we're not told that it's making the horcrux that splits your soul. We're told murder is what splits the soul. The horcrux. And then you use the horcrux spell to take that split soul and put it somewhere else. When Voldemort returns and asks for the, you know, has that interview, asks for the job, how does he look now as opposed to how he looked earlier? Red eyes, pale. Red eyes, pale, Not nose is kind of slitty. Not all the way snake-like. Not all the way snake-like. So why does he look that way? He's already split his soul. Yeah, because parts of his soul are outside his body. That is, he's no longer whole. Now he's, as Fred will joke about in the next book, holy, not in that kind of sense, though that's what Fred is alluding to. George. Okay. Yeah, how do you feel? Holy, etc. Okay. So, they go on. Horcruxes. Dumbledore's, okay, come on, Harry. Put two and two together. Harry's like, the diary. The diary was a horcrux. He stabbed it with the basilisk fang, and what happened? It started bleeding ink. Right? So, one down. He said seven. Harry, I still don't understand. It worked like a horcrux, so he goes on and explains. And then Dumbledore tells Harry what Harry told him. Voldemort had said when he came back, I who have gone further than anybody along the, bound, along the path that leads to immortality. Further than anybody. He was referring to his horcruxes. Horcruxes, plural, Harry. Voldemort had seemed to grow less human with the passing years. The transformation he had undergone seemed to me to be only, inexplic to be only explicable if his soul was mutilated beyond the realms of what we might call usual magic. So he's made himself impossible to kill by murdering other people. Okay. So, Harry, wait. He made seven of these things? They could be anywhere in the world. Good logical deduction, they could be. Dumbledore says, no, Harry, he made six. The seventh part is his soul. However maimed, resides inside his regenerated body. That seventh piece of soul will be the last piece that anybody wishing to kill Voldemort must attack the piece that lives in his body. Okay? So, so in the order that they're revealed, number one's the diary. Two. Ring, what's happened to it? Dumbledore destroyed it. So, 
free? The ring. Oh, well, yeah, you said Slytherins have already done. Slytherins lock it. Then uh, the cup. Four, a cup. A uh, diadem. Five, a diadem or a tiara. Okay, notice, by the way, except for this, what are all of these? Objects. What kind of objects? Objects. Things that mean something. Oh. They are relics. Objects. They are relics. They are things associated with the founders of Hogwarts. That is, for Voldemort, for his mindset, they have power to them. What kinds of power? Power associated with the people who own them. Who owned this? The Gaunt. Go all the way back. Slytherin. Slytherin. And the, um, the three brothers. The, yeah. And the three brothers. Slock it. Slytherin. So, Satan twice. Okay. Cup. Hufflepuff. Oh, Hufflepuff. Diadem. Ruby and a Ravenclaw. Okay. What's six? Nagini the snake. And Dumbledore says number seven is where? Voldemort. Oh, sorry. Voldemort. He says that's the part, because that's not really a Horcrux, even though he says it is. That's the part that remains in Voldemort. So, what does he not mention? Harry. Yeah, he doesn't mention. Harry, why not? He doesn't want to freak him out. Right he doesn't, want to, know. Way, to doesn't want to freak him out, but what should Harry realize? Wait a second. He put a bit of himself into me? Well, you know, he he transferred know. some of his powers, and Harry interprets that. He put a bit of himself into me. Why else does he want to tell him? Because that gives up the game. He doesn't want him to know Because what has to happen to all these? They have to be destroyed. They have to be destroyed. Do you go to the library restricted section and find a book for removing horcruxes from yourself? Do you go find a magical priest and do an exorcism of some sort? No. What has to be done to these to remove, to kill the soul in them? They have to be destroyed. So, sorry, Harry. Hate to tell you, which is why he doesn't. Tell me, any work of literature in history, when someone finds out what their future is, what happens? It gets screwed up. It gets screwed up. They try to do what? Stop it from happening. They try to stop it from happening. And in trying to stop it from happening, they make it happen. Why? Or as they say in Young Frankenstein, there's no escaping destiny. Destiny, destiny, it's fate, so to speak. You can't make an end run around fate. You can't do something fake goes, damn, trick me. Because that would make it no longer fate. Okay? So, he goes through all these. Dumbledore talks about, you know, Sacrificed his hand for a seventh of Voldemort's soul. Yeah, but what doesn't he tell Harry? Oh, by the way, Harry, that black rot that you see there, yeah, it's killing me. How, when did that happen? Beginning. Before the beginning of the school year. Before Dumbledore came to get Harry, when? On his birthday. So before July 31st, the previous year. Okay? And we're going to see a memory later on, not in this book, later book, where Harry's going to learn what? He had less than a year, okay? which is going to, going to be important. So Dumbledore says, when they talk about the locket and Hufflepuff's cup, he says, the only remaining known relic of Gryffindor remains safe. What's he referring to? It's not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> Why is it not the only one? Because they put the damn sorting hat every year. The sorting hat is a known relic. Because what does the hat say? Grogan Gryffindor whipped me off. They put their brains in me. 
So why didn't Voldemort go after the hat? Did he never hear that part of the song? Did he forget it? Hmm, interesting. Anyways, so they go on. Dumbledore says, I am sure he was intending to make his final horcrux with your death. Harry, okay, so he starts going through. Does Voldemort know when a horcrux is destroyed? Interesting question. Let's not talk about it because we don't have time. So he tells Harry when Harry finally asks. Okay, so if I can get rid of all of these, then I can kill him? Then he could be killed? Yes, I think so. Without his horcruxes, Voldemort will be a mortal man with a maimed and diminished soul. Never forget, though, that while his soul may be damaged beyond repair, his brain and magical power remain intact. It will take <coughs> uncommon skill and power to kill a wizard like Voldemort, even without the horcruxes. And what does Harry do? He channels his inner Frodo Baggins. When Gandalf says, use such wit, strength, and heart as you have, he goes, but I don't have any of those. I haven't got uncommon skill and power. You have a power Voldemort has never had. That is love. What's Harry's uncommon skill? To uh, protect others. Protect others, possibly. Is it his messiah complex? I gotta save people, possibly. Compassion, possibly. That's all part of love. That's all part of love. It's something else. It's a skill. What's a skill? It's something you can do. What does Harry seemingly do better than anybody else? Patronus? Louder. That's it. It's that. Beginning of book seven. Harry's taken away from the Dursley's house, and they're attacked. He sees Stan Shunpike coming after him. He thinks Stan Shunpike is what? He's under an imperious curse. And what does he do? Expelliarmus. What does Lupin jump all over his case about? You should have stunned him. You stunned him. You, I mean, he implies you should have killed him. And he's like, ah, it's Voldemort's job. I'm not going to kill him, and I'm not going to stun him. He's several hundred feet in the air. I stun him, what happens? He's dead. <laughs> Splat. Yeah, but Harry, Lupin says. Do I know how it finishes? It's your signature spell. Quite an unusual move. Uncommon skill. What does Expelliarmus do? Okay. For what purpose? We've talked about this before. No. Well, kind of, I guess. It disarms. It removes your enemies, your opponents, forward offensive capability, right? If your enemy is attempting to use Avada Kedavra and your enemy successfully does against somebody else, what has that enemy done to him or herself? They split their soul. Now, until this point, Harry's not aware of that. So when he starts after this point, when he uses Expelliarmus and people who are trying to kill him, he is stopping them from harming themselves. That's why I said early on, Earlier in one of the earlier books, he's doing what? He's protecting even them. He's taking their offensive capability and removing it. Why? So they don't hurt themselves. Okay? So, Harry's like, okay, okay. I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. So when the prophecy says, all that power the Dark Lord knows not, it means love. So what do I do? I run up to Voldemort and give him a big hug and say, you are loved. Just be pleased. You are loved. 
Come on, everybody. Let's give him a big. Is that it? Yes, just love. <laughs> but Harry, never forget that what else the prophecy says is only significant. Why? What, what does Harry think a prophecy means? It's this. Harry thinks it means fate. Where's the pro? Here's a big question. Ooh, that's be a good final exam question. Where's the prophecy come from? Not who. It comes through Trelawney. Where does it come from? Who is speaking through Trelawney? We don't know. Okay. So what does he mean? Double Harry thinks what about the prophecy? He kills me, I kill him. There's no second. There's no third door. Dumbledore says what about the prophecy? The only reason the prophecy has any effect is what? He made it so. Voldemort made it so. Voldemort chose you. And Harry's like, okay, that still means I'm screwed. Either I got to kill him or he's got to kill me. Like, no, Harry. Dumbledore's trying to get Harry to think what? There's no coercion. There's no force here. So he says, imagine for a moment. You never heard of the prophecy at all. And you saw what was going on. What would you want to do? He says, I, I want to stop him. Bingo. That's it. All right? So, Dumbledore says, through everything you've been through, Harry, you've never been attracted to the dark. He's like, of course I haven't. You're protected by your ability to love, the only protection that can possibly work against the lure of power like Voldemort's. In spite of all that temptation, you have endured all the suffering. You remain pure of heart. So why isn't Gryffindor, by the way? What are Gryffindor's colors? Red and gold. Gold symbolizes purity of heart. What does red symbolize? Blood. Passion. Not erotic romance passion. It's sacrifice. For Harry, at least. I think I had to put this one on line. What's the Gryffindor symbol? A roaring lion. Not a lion. It's a lion eagle. It's a Gryffindor, right? Which yeah. is half lion, half eagle. Lion is what? King of the bees. Eagle, king of the air. It's got two natures. Earth, sky. Yeah, there's a lot of Jesus symbolism there. Okay? I'm not saying it's Jesus. Okay? So, Dumb Voldemort now knows all this about you, Harry. So, that's when he says, what would you do if... if you never heard about prophecy. I'd want to. I'd want to finish, and I'd want to do it. There you go. So, prophecy doesn't mean you have to do anything. In other words, Harry, you could leave, go to South America. What's the problem? He'll find you. Yeah, he'll be looking for you. He will continue to hunt you, which makes it certain, really, that that one of us is going to end up killing the other. Yeah. Okay, I get it now. And then he comes to this realization. It was, he thought, the difference between being dragged into the arena to face a battle to the death. So, option one, drag. Probably, if you're being dragged, then what else are you doing? Fighting back. You're kicking and screaming because you don't want to be dragged into that arena. Okay? So, dragged. Kicking and screaming, where? Into an arena. What's an arena? Think the Roman Colosseum. That's an arena. Okay? I use that image intentionally. So, to face a battle to the death, or, and, walking Calmly. How? Head <clears throat> held high. What's the difference between the two? Is this one the person, you know, a coward? He accepted. Bingo. He accepted what? I, believe I, must die. I must die. Is there not a chance I could win this one? 
No. Why? Because of her use of this term. What's the arena she is alluding to? I used the Roman Colosseum intentionally. What do we know happened in the Roman Colosseum? Watch one of the greatest films of the last 30 years now. Gladiator. What happened in the Roman Colosseum? You not only had gladiators, who did the gladiators fight? Sometimes each other. Sometimes hungry lions. Who else? Christians of the early church. And we have tons of accounts of Christians marching in, head held high, even singing hymns. Why? Going to Jesus. Not Jesus was there with a sword, but go ahead, take me. One of those, and I know we're a minute over. We'll talk about him again later. A guy named St. Ignatius. The name ought to ring a bell. And if that part doesn't, then this one should. Of Antioch. I keep thinking this class ends at 5 o'clock. I have no idea why. Okay, we have plenty of time. St. Ignatius of Antioch. Uh, do those names ring any bells? Ignatius, isn't that Weasley's middle name? Yes, it is. Probably a reference to a different Ignatius. That's probably Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits who started the Spanish Inquisition. There's a reason why Percy is an inquisitor. Okay? Three letters. Ig. What's the difference in spell spelling? Ignotus. And the third one? I think it's Antioch or Antioch or something like that. Cadmus. Okay. St. Ignatius of Antioch was arrested by the Romans. He was a late first century, early second century, like 90 to about 110. He died somewhere between those years. He was arrested by the Romans, marched off to Rome, and as on the process of marching off to Rome, he writes a series of seven letters to seven different churches, or, or to seven groups, okay? And what he's essentially saying in all of these letters, because he's heard word what Christians are trying to do. The word he's heard is they're trying to buy off my freedom. He say, don't. Don't buy off my freedom. Why? I want to be a real Christian. How do you be a real Christian? Well, what happened to Christ? You die. You die. You really die. That's how to be a real Christian. So he got taken off to the Roman Colosseum and was murdered there. He was torn apart by lions. As I said, we've got tons of these kinds of accounts. I also I used to teach, haven't taught in several years, early Christian literature of the Middle East, which has some of these lives of saints and such. Okay? I think that's what she means by this, by using the term Arena, because what else could you use? Battlefield? Stadium? Pitch? Okay, but she doesn't. She uses that term, and with your head held high. Some people, perhaps, would say that there is little to choose between the two ways. This way and this way. Why is there little to choose? They both you both end up dead. Right? The end result is you're not living. Which, if you're Voldemort, what's that mean? They're the same. Doesn't matter how you die, you die. Voldemort, flight from death. Right? But Dumbledore knew. This is Harry thinking. Dumbledore knows the difference, and so do I. And so do my parents. Right? Did his parents die kicking and screaming? Well, his mom kind of did, but you know, it was a little bit different there. How is she dying? She died fighting for her son. How does she literally die? She dies stretched out in front of him. And does what? According to Dumbledore, book, first book, she casts a, what kind of charm on him? A devil. Love. Love. It's love that Dumbledore says, 
you have coursing through your veins, which Voldemort can't understand. Which also means what now? By the way, Voldemort's got a little tincture of love flowing through his veins, which I think is what Harry is appealing to in the book seven when he says, come on, Tom, try for a little, what's the word? Remorse. remorse. Try for a little remorse. Because what must you do to feel remorse? If I find one of my dogs, and one of my dogs kills one of my cats, Tom, if I find one of my dogs and I say, my big lamb, Remus, Remus, Remus. <laughs> they're all named after Harry Potter's house. Remus, you know, because they killed the cat Fluffy. Remus, why'd you do that? Is she going to roll over and go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to? Yeah, no, it's dog being a dog, right? Dog doesn't know any better. Dog's not a moral being like we are. What's the problem with Tom Riddle? You shatter your soul into multiple pieces and you become less and less of a moral being. Not that he was ever much of one to begin with. All right? Because psychopaths are what? What do we know about psychopaths? Their understanding of morality is not no. our understanding. Lack of empathy. Empathy meaning? Together, the path, feeling. Wow. This. If you have no empathy, it means I don't give a damn what happens to you. It's all about me. I'm the important one. You're just a stepping stone on my way to greatness. That's what all of the deaf ears are. Voldemort. Okay? So, Harry says, there's all the difference in the world. Well, what did Harry do at the end of book four, Goblet of Fire? When he realized it's him or me, he's not going to die out. On his knees. Cowering on his knees, begging for mercy. And so what does he do? He stands up behind that tombstone. Notice the symbolism, by the way. He rises out of the grave and uses what? Spelly armies. Okay. So, we go on from here. We see here he used Sectum Sempra. How do we know he doesn't mean to? Because he freaks out. Okay, he doesn't know what it is. Does he realize what happens? I mean, he's like, oh, I did not want to do that. Draco, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to kill you. I mean, Though it is kind of, you know, poetic justice, right? Because Jingo breaks his nose. Yeah, but Harry nearly, nearly kills him. Not quite poetic justice, okay? So we have the lightning. We have the seer overheard. Skipping a bit. Uh, and what else happens? Harry gets a look inside the pensive again. And what does he discover? Wait, is it a look in the pencil? No, it's him talking with um, Trelawney. What does Trelawney reveal? Snape was the one who overheard the first prophecy. And Harry, he is learning, puts two and two together. Snape was the one what? who ratted out his parents. And he wants to know from Dumbledore, why do you trust him? And Dumbledore says in the chapter of the seer overheard, page 549, you have no idea of the remorse. I trust Severus Snape completely. Okay. They go off to the cave. They get the locket. Okay. What does Harry witness Dumbledore do in the cave? Other than just walk. Why does he freak out? Yeah, why is he seeing all those things? He drinks that potion, right? And he cries out, no, 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 you know, all this kind of stuff. Why is that significant? Or why is the drinking the potion significant? When they leave the cave, what does Dumbledore tell Harry they really, really, really need to do fast? Who do they need to find? 
Man of Pumphrey? Snape. Snape. Why? Potions master. What does Dumbledore know the potion is doing? Yeah, he's dying. So he's dying from this. And now what does the potion do? <coughs> it just speeds up that process. He's got to find Snape quick. We're not going to get this all the way done. So we get to the end of the lightning struck tower. And what does Harry have to witness? Not only Dumbledore's death, what else? Snape doing it. What else? And we finally find out what it was. Narcissa, notice her name, by the way, self-love. What Narcissa is trying to get Snape to do at the beginning of the novel with the unbreakable vow. To protect Draco, right? So what is the charge Voldemort gave Draco? What a chicken ass thing to do. So he sets Draco up for failure so that he can kill him? Yeah. Oh. So why not just punish him? All right, we're done. I'm so okay, um, we'll spend a couple minutes on this. We'll have a quiz on this on Monday, and then we'll jump into Deathly Hallows. <laughs>